Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to be talking about how more and more farmers are applying their fertilizer on their fields with variable rate. With the improvements in technology, you can now do this yourself, and it's really not that difficult. We'll show you how to do it on today's program. Well, another thing you can do yourself, or you can have it hired done, is adding drain tile to your ground. Today, we want to talk about tiling and improving overall soil health and plant health. I thought you were going to talk about our Weed of the Week. Yeah, you could hire somebody to do it, but we'll give you all the tools you need to control our Weed of the Week on today's program. That's coming up a little bit later in the show. First, here's our Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about row spacings in crops. As farmers are seeding various crops, they often have a certain row spacing in mind that they want to achieve. So they want the plants to be a certain distance apart. Let's take corn for example. When I was growing up, our dad had wide row corn, which in our area meant it was either going to be 36 or 38 inches apart. Why 36 or 38 inches? Well, the tractors that dad ran had wider tires and this allowed him to reduce compaction on the soil so he put his tires out there in between those 36 to 38 inch rows that were great for him for many purposes. He was able to use big tires to reduce compaction. He kept the plants enough of a distance apart uh, that he could get through and easily cultivate and do many different field operations. However, he figured out uh, maybe a few years into our life, I, I don't know how old we were, maybe 12 years old or something, that, you know, I'm not maximizing my yield. The guys that are using narrower equipment, narrower tires and these types of things, and had narrower rows, 30 inch rows at that time was considered narrow, well, they were beating me in yield. And if I can get more yield, I'm gonna have to make some changes on my farm. Well, why would they get more yield in narrower spacings? What it really comes down to, and what we as farmers often have to think about is, we're harnessing the potential of the sun. If we can capture sunlight and take that energy and turn that into more yield, well, that's ideal. Sunlight hitting the ground doesn't do us a lot of good in many cases, but sunlight hitting the plant, well, hey, that's what we're after. So uh, many farmers started going to drilled or in other words, seven inch all the way up to 10 inch spacing, so very narrow, for crops like soybeans, wheat, many other small grains. That's great in terms of capturing that sunlight. The problem with that is, well, now when we have that dense canopy out there, it traps moisture, and yes, it's great for environments where we don't have a lot of moisture, but when you have trapped moisture, what does that mean? That means that there's going to be moisture sitting on your leaves much longer than in those wider rows. Well, the longer you have moisture in the leaves, the more prone to disease you are. So that means we need more tolerant varieties for disease. We also need better fungicides. I think you're jumping the gun here just a little bit, Brian, talking about mid to late season problems. We've got to get the crop out of the ground. One of the things that we find as we move to wider rows, well, if we're planting, say, 30,000 corn seeds per acre, and we only have a row every three feet, well, yeah, we've got a lot of seeds. They're pretty close together. But if we narrow those rows up and we still stay at 30,000 plant population, now the seeds have a lot of distance between them, and they don't get some help from the other seeds around them for push. Now, with corn, corn just has to put a little spike out of the ground. It's no big deal. But with broadleaf crops, like soybeans, for example, the two halves of the soybean seed are the first two leaves that are going to come up out of the ground. And that plant has to push those leaves up through the soil surface. If there's any kind of cresting out there, it sure helps having more seeds closer together. So we'll see a lot of farmers that'll adjust row spacing to try to have lots of seeds close together so they can get more push. All right, so Darren and I could go back and forth with the positives and the negatives of a narrow row spacing. But the whole point here today is that in almost any crop, there are different row spacings and different reasons why farmers use those. And that's the reason why we wanted to talk about that just a little bit today. And one of those reasons is to try to control or at least slow down our Weed of the Week. 
We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. In today's market, growers deserve products that bring true, measurable value to their farm. My name is Wade Barnes and I am the co-founder and CEO of Farmer's Edge. We believe the only way to understand value is to experience it yourself. Try our integrated data solutions with no commitments until May 2018. I know we can make a difference on your farm. Your data is your asset. Own it and use it. In life, when you put the max in, you get the max out. It's no different for your corn, which is why 40 years of effort have gone into proving that Instinct and Enserve nitrogen stabilizers do more than just stabilize nitrogen, they maximize nitrogen. So your corn gives you the max in return. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. How will you secure your farm for the future? The Quasar Chopping Corn Head from Capello USA will help. Our design is focused on efficiency, longevity, and reducing harvest loss, making the Quasar the corn harvest solution to bring your farm forward. With hundreds of units ready for immediate delivery, secure your farm's future today. Do it for your farm. Do it for them. Order now. Capello USA. Italian craftsmanship. American grit. Avoid dry run failures with the new High Pro Force Field Pump. Providing the ultimate protection, this wet seal pump will save you on costly in season downtime to keep your sprayer running. Now all you have to worry about is the weather. High Pro, helping you spray better. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. It makes a lot of sense that not every part of your field needs the exact same fertility application, so why not do variable rate to save some money and better place those nutrients where they can give you a return on investment? The problem has been, how do you do that? How do you make those maps to, to get this done? So in the past, guys would look to a custom applicator or a fertilizer dealer to make those maps. They had the software, they had the means to do it. Now this is something that any of us can do and we can do it very easily on our own farms. To begin with, I'll just tell you what we've done on our own farm. We've looked at yield maps and we've also looked at soil fertility maps. So the case can be made for a yield map and fertilizing based on that because if you had 80 bushel corn in one area and 250 bushel corn in another area of the same field, well you know that you removed a lot more fertility in that 250 bushel area. So if you're just trying to get the soil back to where it was before, well that's kind of how you can set up your zones. The other way to do it, and really the more accurate way, is to look at what did I do for soil testing and how do my zones look or grids if I've got areas of high fertility or areas of low fertility and I'm going for the same yield goal across the entire field, well obviously it's going to take different fertilizer applications to get the right amount of fertilizer in that field. One of the easy ways to do this is with georeferencing. You can use something like the Ag PhD Soils app, for example. So you can go out and test your own soil. You'll know right exactly where those points are at. And then you can make your own variable rate prescription maps using the app. That's pretty simple. Another way you may choose to do it is with a service like Farmer's Edge, for example, where they're taking your yield data right out of your combine. They're taking your soils maps. They're, they're taking your soil test information and then they can dial up in different zones of your field what it's going to take for fertility to reach your yield goals. All right, so once you have the maps, you're probably going, okay, that's great. I figured out what I need to do. Now, how do I actually do it? Well, I can just tell you, again, in our own operation, we've set up everything for variable rate. 
Obviously, we can do the sprayer that's been out there for years. But to change our fertilizer spreader over, it cost a little bit of money. I don't remember exactly what we spent, three, four thousand dollars, something like that. It's not a real big expense. I paid for that in the first field. Okay, then we looked at our anhydrous applicator. Not that difficult, cost a little bit of money. Again, I probably saved enough just to pay for the add-on that I needed in the first field. Then I can go all the way down to the planter. Yes, we're doing some different things with the planter, with our strip-till machine. So we've got every device on our farm, every machine that we're using to apply fertilizer set up for variable rate. Now one question you may have is, well, I've got some areas of my field that need more zinc, and I've got other areas of the field that need more phosphorus. So if I do a quote-unquote complete blend, well, it's not going to hit every area just right, and that's, that's absolutely true. You may have some areas that you say, you know what, I really want to set up a variable rate map just for zinc, and I'll make one pass across the field doing that, and then I could do my NPNK in a sec separate app. That's fine. You can certainly do that. We've had several of our fields where we've gone out multiple times across the field in the same fall just trying to meet the different nutrient needs that we had. Now certainly there are ways to do it that are different than that so you don't have to make multiple trips. Once you set, th set things up with variable rate and maps and GPS, it's not that difficult. Almost anybody can run a lot of this equipment anymore with the modern technology we have. So just kind of to sum things up here, I really like variable rate technology for a lot of reasons. Number one, it's great for the environment. When you think about it, we're not putting any more fertility than we need out in the field in any area of the field, that's great. Number two is, it's good for our yields. Now instead of just spreading one rate of fertilizer across the field, we're gonna maximize what we need in each area of the field. And so, number three, and what I always like to get to, Darren, is it's right for the pocketbook. We don't overspend in any area, and we don't underspend in any area either. We're spending what we feel is appropriate to give us the best return on investment. One other thing that always gives a great return on investment is stopping our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this weed later in the show. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry, and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss. You'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. The desire to bring real world solutions to growers' difficult production challenges has led Bayer to introduce Credenz, our national brand of soybean seed, backed by years of research in smart genetics. Smart genetics is based on four concepts state-of-the-art breeding allows Bayer to identify key traits and characteristics that bring value and protection to your soybean production situation. Next is herbicide tolerant traits. The flexibility of multiple trait platforms allows growers to pick the most effective weed control system for their farm. Next is tailored varieties. With a robust portfolio, Credenz offers many solutions for difficult situations that you may experience along with our best-in-class agronomic service team to support variety selection. And last is ongoing innovation. Bayer is continuing to invest in ways to improve yields and increase the profitability on your farm. We love the quality, we love the construction. We're looking forward to working with Morton in the future. They have this down to a science, they know exactly what you want, they know how to make it happen, it's an easy process. I would definitely recommend Morton. From the first time I met the salesman to the last nail that the crew put in, it has been a positive and professional experience. I'm so happy I found Morton because they just make the job so easy. Find the building of your dreams at mortonbuildings.com. This agro liquid line is something special. A lot of really impressive playmakers. Take a look at Sure K. This guy is an enigma. But wrap your head around the exceptionally high plant response when compared to conventional potassium sources, the research proven plant availability, plus flexible application options and mixing capabilities. Really stellar performance stats. Sure K is a true standout, and that's a winning goal on any field. You can read in almost any farm magazine anymore. The number one talk in a lot of agriculture today is about soil health, which in turn leads to plant health. 
Well, I can promise you, you will not have a healthy soil unless you have good drainage. So today we're going to talk about drain tile and its impact on soil health. Soils Class 101 tells you that you need 50% dirt, 25% air, and 25% water. And coming from a drier part of the country, we're always concerned about having enough water but you can certainly have too much water. And when you get soils that are saturated, it forces the air out of the soil. So the obvious thing for plant health and soil health is to have plenty of oxygen in that soil. You can control it with drainage tile. What it really comes down to is water table management. We want lots of water in the soil, but we also need that air in the soil. So ideally, especially in our part of the world where we don't get a lot of rainfall, we're typically talking about keeping the water table at about three feet deep. So in other areas of the country where they get lots of rainfall, they might want the water table down at four feet or five feet deep. So then when they get a big rain, they have capacity and the water table can rise and it's still not killing the roots. That's the real concern here. And I look at on our farm too. Yes, we are in a dry area of the country, but in almost every one of our fields, almost every single spring, we're cold and we're wet. Well, First of all, on the wet side, why are we wet? The water table has risen a lot of times between fall, winter, and early spring. We get a lot of moisture during those times, especially snow and snow melt. So we have a high water table. We can't have that. We want some oxygen in there. When we look overall at heat and we say, hey, we have cold soils in the spring, I just want you to think about this for a second. What warms up faster, air or water? Well, obviously the air is going to warm up a lot faster than water. So if we have the water table down and we have at least 25% air or oxygen in our soil, well, that's going to warm up a lot faster than if that soil was 100% filled with water. Once that soil begins to warm up, the soil microbes can start working. And when you think about it, if you've got good levels of oxygen in the soil, now all those little microbes can thrive. If you get saturated soils, your pH normally tends to go up. You accumulate salts and other things that should naturally flush out. It's a bad situation for soil microbes. We need those little microbes working to break down residue, to help with nutrient availability and the health of our crops. When we go from soil health to thinking about plant health, I look at two things, disease and drought. So in terms of disease, if you have a wetter soil and that water table has been higher, you are going to have more disease issues. Not only because there's more water around, but also because your root system has been damaged, your plant isn't maximizing its potential, and therefore it isn't able to fight off diseases like it could. In terms of the drought side, I know it seems counterintuitive when I say I want to lower the water table so I make my plant more drought tolerant. You might say, what? I want more water in the soil. No, you don't. You want that water table down. You want those roots to go deep fast. In the spring, if you can get your roots down as quickly as possible, down to two and three feet deep, well now when the drier times come later in the summer, you've got those deep roots. They are established and they're able to pull up moisture from down deep in the soil. You also have a bigger root system, so you're less susceptible to insect feeding. Maybe it's wireworms, maybe it's corn rootworms. Who knows what your crop is, but bugs, if you have a limited root system, well, any loss to that root system is a big hit to the plant. The other thing is, if you don't have much of a root system, you're more prone to lodging and other issues in the season, other severe weather events. So getting that root system developed and getting it deep is very, very important. So we really encourage you, take a look at the practice of drain tile on your farm. It's been unbelievably helpful for our yields. It's one of the best things you can do for the environment if you tile correctly. And all I can say is, hey, we've got way healthier soils than we've ever had before. And that's thanks in part to drain tile. One other benefit to tile is you can get out in the field to control our weed of the week on a timely basis, which you will need to do. Can you identify this week's weed? The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Dow AgroSciences. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough. But we're tougher. With unrivaled weed control. Reduced drift. And near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs>
One of the toughest weeds we've seen around the world in the last few years has been mare's tail. Now mare's tail is typically a winter annual, but we have seen some come up in the spring as well. So we want to talk today about controlling it in the fall. That's your best time usually, but also how can you stop it next spring? Well, we really get spoiled. We had Roundup for all those years yep. working extremely well on mare's tail. So we didn't even have to look at other right, options. But we now, sprayed Roundup, it was cheap, it was effective, it was great. Yep, but now a lot of the mare's tail is resistant to Roundup. A lot is also resistant to the ALS chemistry. So what do you do if it's resistant to Roundup and ALS? Well, I would start right now. If I had a mare's tail problem this year, I'd be out there this fall putting a treatment on. You can still use things like 2,4-D and dicamba, and they're great at helping out. But you use can them at also, high rates. Yeah, you can use them at high rates in the fall. That's fantastic. Much higher rates than you can use in the spring. The other thing is you can add residual products to it, whether it's Valor or Authority, ahead of soybeans, for example. You get some great activity out of those PPOs, not only in the burn down, but also in soil activity too. Okay, so let's turn to spring. The reason why we want to control it in the fall is by spring, if you didn't control it in the fall, the mare's tail can get pretty large. And the problem in the spring is when you want to plant, it's going to be cold, which means when you want to spray, it's probably going to be cold. And no herbicide works as well when it's cold as when it's warm. All right, so let's stay on the soybeans here for just a second. You've got to heat those products up. If it's going to be cold in the spring and it's going to be a little more difficult to control things, heat them up. So we would use something like Authority or Valor or Fierce and get out there with some crop oil or some methylated seed oil with them to warm them up And Metribuzin. So our three pre strategy is awesome on mare's tail when you get the Metribuzin and the PPO, either Authority or Valor. But yes, you've got to have some crop oil with it. Probably you want to add some germoxone or dicamba if you're in front of extend beans. Okay, now in front of corn, I really like verdict because you can put a high rate of that out there so you can have a lot of sharpen in the mix. That's a, one of the ingredients yep, but you'll need some methylated seed oil or crop oil with that as well. Now, speaking of sharpen, I also like it out in front of wheat because you can use a high rate of straight sharpen in front of wheat. Again, you put the oil with it, you can do a great job. Here's one of the biggest problems I've seen over the last few years though. What if we don't get the burn down out? Okay, you didn't get the fall treatment done, you didn't get the burn down on, and now your post-emerging crop, well in soybeans that's really tough. Yes, if it's Extend you could use Dicamba, yes if it's Liberty you could use Liberty. Both of those are okay, but keep in mind a lot of mare's tail by that point might be a foot or two tall. Are you really going to kill it? You might, but you might not. The other thing is a lot of people will say, well first rate's not too bad. Well. It wasn't too bad, but now there's ALS resistant mare's tail. So is first rate going to help? Is Roundup going to help when it's Roundup resistant? No, it's not. No, you've given up most of your options in soybeans. That's why you really have to plant that herbicide tolerant crop and do things right up front. Yep. And right now in the fall is a great time to be out there. You can set the stage for a successful mare's tail program going into next year. Okay, let's talk real quick about corn. I like status the best, throw a little atrazine with it in wheat. You know, Husky's probably the best. Generally speaking, the wheat chokes out the mare's tail. We don't have a big problem typically in wheat. That's all the time we have for our Weed of the Week mare's tail, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the system that makes the difference. The system I put to work because only I know what it takes out here. Yields what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like high energy in, three forms of nitrogen, with sulfur and iron, with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers, he's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. N, P, and K, they're critical for a healthy crop. Improve their availability and your yield potential with Quick Roots Microbial Seed Inoculant. Quick Roots technology contains two powerful microbes that can help improve access to key nutrients, and it's available in an easy to apply formulation. Simply mix it directly into your dry planter box and your seeds will be covered. Learn more at MonsantoBioAg.com slash Quick Roots. 
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. Introducing the SoilMax ZD48, the newest addition to the SoilMax Gold Digger lineup. The first plow designed for smaller class tractors, the ZD48 has been tested on tractors weighing between 10,000 and 16,000 pounds with excellent results. Designed for row crop farms, vineyards, irrigation, and specialty crop farms. The SoilMax ZD48 will install tile up to 48 inches deep as well as install 3 or 4 inch tile. The ZD48 truly opens up the world of tile installation to more farms than ever before. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. The AFS Connect Farm Management System from Case IH connects you and only you to the information you need most from your equipment from anywhere at any time. AFS Connect, only from Case IH. Perhaps the biggest challenge for farmers over the years has been the fact that there are so many things a farmer must do correctly in order to make a profit. You need to be a mechanic, a grain marketer, a top-notch agronomist, a great machinery operator, and have many more skills as well. In today's Iron Talk, we'll discuss how you can tell if you're doing one of those fall jobs just right. We'll look at the best way to determine if you're doing deep tillage successfully on your farm. Whether you're farming way up north, have heavy soils that you feel need tillage, or you just have a ton of residue to deal with. If deep tillage is one of those jobs you need to do this fall, it's important that you do it correctly so you're not wasting your time or even making things worse on your farm. The one tool you need to carry with you when walking fields or doing tillage is a spade. I prefer a tile spade, and here's how I use it. Just go out behind your deep tillage implement, put the shovel in the ground, and stand on it. If the shovel goes all the way down into the soil, chances are your tillage has successfully broken up the compaction in your ground. Back in 2006, I was in Eastern Europe in the Ukraine. Our group stopped at a field where a farm worker was doing some deep tillage. I went behind his tractor and deep ripper, and my shovel would only go in at most six inches deep, and then it stopped. The operator needed to make some adjustments to the tillage implement to get deeper, and he also needed more horsepower to do the job right. Once he made the changes, he was breaking up the compaction layer and heading towards higher yields for next year. So this fall, whether you've done tillage already or not, take a spade out in your field and check to see where the hard pan is. You'll have better results from your tillage and better yields next year. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt in a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. Before we go, we just wanted to tell you thanks for watching today, and we hope you can tune into the Ag PhD radio show this week as well. We talk about agronomic topics all week long and take your live phone calls. We are on Sirius XM Channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We've got a Farm Basics, Weed of the Week, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. A healthy soil helps to keep our air and water clean while providing a medium for productive crops, pastures, and shelter belts. It takes good management practices and care to accomplish this. To learn more about how farmers are improving the health of their soils, visit the Responsible Nutrient Management Foundation at rnmf.org.